What is up everyone on YouTube, and today is going to mark one of the last few days if you started the Moonlight Recruitment event when it first started for that event. And basically you can choose a free Moonlight 5 star, if you started late you'll have more time. But I'm making this video because I saw a lot of questions on which ML 5 star you should take specifically between these four. I think these four units are pretty much going to be the top tier damage dealers available from the Moonlight 5 star selection pool. We have Lionheart Sermia, Lone Crescent, Bologna. Briar, Witch, Asaria, and Zeo. As you can see, I have them all four geared. Usually I only keep units that are good geared if I like scroll down here, like Ben Amar is not that great, not really geared, Holiday Yufin, no gear, Huayang, not really geared, right, um, etc. So you can see that all four of these are geared. I didn't gear them for this video, this is the gear that I had on these units. And we're actually going to talk about the pros and cons for all four of these units. Now I'm going to preface if you guys actually have too many light units, don't feel inclined to pick only a dark unit. If you have too many dark units, don't feel inclined to pick a light unit for Moonlight 5 stars, or even Moonlight units in general. Their element doesn't really matter. Um, sure, you might get some uh, advantageous element against like dark or light, respectively, the opposite element. But for the most part, it's not going to really matter at all. It doesn't take any factor into how you should be drafting or picking your units, especially Moonlight units. Also, all four of these units are pretty similar in strength. They all shine in different areas of content though, so you can't go wrong with any four of these, to be completely honest. But I want to talk about their pros and what they're good against, so you guys can actually see if that is what your account is lacking. Or if you're lacking something that Briar Witch Asaria is very good at, which for example is going to be countering Evasion because of her hit chance buff, and even countering like revive teams like Destina and stuff like that and make Chloe's because of her um, passive where she cannot um, allow like, people from reviving when she's on the field, then maybe Briar Witch's area is good, right? So that's an example, but we'll talk about every unit's strengths and maybe it'll help you choose what you want to get. Now, this is just my own opinion. You can choose what you want. If there's a completely different unit you want that's your, like your favorite unit, for like instance, Judge Kise, then sure, go for them. But I think these four units are going to be pretty much the top picks for damage dealers from the event. So we're going to start off with the lone light unit, Lionheart Sermia. Very powerful damage dealing unit. So she's very strong against units with extra attacks, counter attacks, or dual attacks because it procs its passive. That will CR push her full cleanser and increase her defense and effect resist. And this is very important because the defense will amplify her damage because her damage from her S3 and S1 will scale with defense and her S3 hits like a truck. You have her on a pretty high damage build with like 2,000 defense at least, and you know, as high crit damage as possible on like Golden Rose, you will do a ton of damage and potentially one shot a lot of units. She's a good counter into Conquer Ilias, into Ocean Breeze Luka, into Navy Captain Landy. Basically anything with counter attacks or extra attacks she's very good against. In this current meta, there are a ton of them, even Bellion she's very good against. I actually used Lionheart Sermia in my first climb to Legend 1 in Arena offense on my auto team and she was the star carry for sure and she's very very good. The only thing is she is pretty hard to build so what I mean by that is she's very stat hungry. You want 2000 defense at least, you want at least like 160 speed, you need 100% crit chance, she's very reliant on her imprint and you also want as high crit damage as possible but you also want 50% effect resist and that is because you want to stop this defense buff from getting taken off by anything with a dispel. And because you actually get 50% extra effect resist, by having built in 50% from your gear, you'll actually be able to stop most dispellers that aren't dedicated to dispelling with high effectiveness. So things like Meteor Cowric will not be able to strip your Lionheart Zermia of your defense buff, which is very important. And yeah, it's just hard to build. Uh, you need gear that rolls into health. You want some health on her as well, at least like 13k. Uh, you need defense stats, which is not very high in demand compared to other units that, you know, uh, need health and you can see that the gear needs to be pretty niche which is the worst thing um, but she's a very powerful damage dealer overall if you don't have the gear to support her i probably wouldn't pick her it does take quite some time to farm the gear for her right you need destruction set gear but you also need like defense percent main stat uh, rings which are hard to get especially it'll take some time um, so if you want to use a unit right away why not it might not be the best bet but you can eventually get to the point where you farm her gear i think she'll be pretty meta proof because she does counter just a core aspect of the game, which is counter attacks, dual attacks, and extra attacks, and a very solid AoE damage dealer. If you're looking for a unit to deal with Navy Captain Landis and just extra attacks like Conquer Lilius and Ocean Mizuka, and just anything that you know counters, she's a very, very good pick. Next, we will talk about Lone Crescent Bologna. So she kind of counters the same units here. Um, 
she is going to be good into Navy Captain Landy. And that is because she always crits with her S3, S2, and S1, which means you don't need to build her on any crit chance. She is also very good against teams that have pretty low damage because she ramps up. Lionheart Sermia, actually none of the four units ramp up, but Lone Crescent Blown as S2 will have it so she ramps up attack every time she actually attacks. She also does pretty decent self-sustain if you have her on Sigurd Scythe, and she does a ton of damage. And also grants Vigor to herself and will also grant it to her team if you actually kill an enemy with it, and she is very hard. She's the definition of like a ramp up unit. Uh, she's very good into Navy Captain Landy, very good into Senya, very good into Shu, and very good into just bruiser teams. Out of the four units here, she's the best into very tanky teams because, like I said a million times, she ramps up. The only thing is, her gear is also very specific. So you only want attack, defense, health, and crit damage, right? You don't really need speed because she's counterattacking a lot and she'll see her push when she activates her counterattack with her S2. And you don't need crit chance at all. I actually have wasted subs in the crit chance because she has built in guaranteed crit, right? So you're gonna want to run her either on counter set or uh, destruction set. And basically you want to just go for health, attack, crit damage, and defense, right? And on weapons, you can't get defense, so I have 5% crit here. Uh, here, I have pretty much really good subs here with some speed. Speed isn't required, but you do want some on her. I'd say like at least like 130-ish, 120-ish should be fine. Um, this is a very good piece for her as well. You're gonna see I have some wasted crit chance here. And you can see this is the gear that she wants. Also, she wants penetration set, which is a little bit easier to get nowadays, but uh, it is harder to get for newer players because it's locked behind Katie's and Rift. Um, so because of that, it'll be hard to use her. If you don't have pen set, you'll notice a sharp drop off in her S3 and her S1 damage, which is a very hard hitting skill. So you definitely want it. You can run her on crit chance set, but I highly recommend, you know, switching into pen set as soon as you can. Very solid unit. You know, she's very fun to use. And like I said, very, very good against Bruiser teams. Very good against the Navy Captain Landy specifically. I think she's the best against Navy Captain Landy, more so than Lionheart Sermia. Even the Lionheart Sermia counters counterattacks. Lone Crescent Blona uh, doesn't have to actually go through the RNG of having to crit her. She just guarantees the crit on her. You'll one shot a lot of Navy Captain Landy with your S3. If you don't one shot with this, you just sold her an S1 or just regular S1 the turn after, and she is usually dead. Okay, next on the list we have Bryo Chesaria. I briefly mentioned her before. Uh, all of these units will require, require specific gear besides Zeo, I'd say. I think Zeo is the most flexible and easier to, um, easiest to build. But Bryo Chesaria. Um, she's very good against evasion units, right? She has that built-in 50% hit chance, which will go through most passives. And if you need to go through, you know, extra artifacts on top of that, you just put her on something such as, you know, Symbol of Unity. And there's also another Ranger artifact that gives you hit chance, Air to Surface Missile, if you have this, very good as well. If you want to put your symbol on someone else. And yeah, she's very strong because she has built-in hit chance. She stops revived. And she also can actually strip all your buffs, put on buffable, and put a defense break at a 75% chance. And her damage doesn't scale that greatly with crit damage. You just mostly want to stack attack and you want to go high into effectiveness because a lot of the times you won't be able to actually ideally or realistically soul burner S3, even though it ignores effect resist. Um, it's not a 100% chance to land this defense break, so you don't get too much value out of this. You're most likely going to save your souls and just pray it lands because there's RNG no matter what. So I like to run her at 100% effectiveness. So, um, I've seen people run her higher, I've seen people run her at no effectiveness and full damage. I, this is just what I think is the best for her. And honestly, I think if you want to play her in regular like arena offense, Guild Wars offense mostly, I think you don't need this artifact, but if you want to play her in RTA, Guiding Light is a must-have. Uh, it's really hard to play her without it because she's very squishy. Sure, she has this immortality buff, but most likely she'll end up getting CC'd by like an air well or something like that, or even, you know, Meteor Cowric s 2 her is very bad. So you really want Guiding Light Honor to play her in RTA. If you don't care about RTA, you don't have to uh, worry about this. So if you don't have Guiding Light, it's very hard to use her in RTA. Um, but you can actually get this from the current custom group summon, so it's actually perfect timing. So you can actually put it on her, and she'll be very good. But just keep in mind, if you don't have this artifact on her, it's very hard to use her in RTA. But she's very good against units like Savior Aiden, uh, very good against even Navy Captain Landy. That defense break kind of cripples her. And she's also very good against any other evasion unit. Uh, for the most part. So if you're struggling against Evasion, Bryo Chesaria is a very, very good option. She shuts that down. Also very good against those pesky revive units. And all you need really is speed, effectiveness, crit chance, crit damage, and attack. So five substats, basically like a normal damage dealer with some effectiveness sprinkled in, and you should be good to go. 
So any of those weird gears you have, like this one, for example, it's not even reforged. That has, you know, crit chance, crit damage, and effectiveness, right? A lot of effectiveness. This can be used on Bryochisaria, which is very nice. I honestly don't know why this is not reforged. There we go. I have a ton of mats, so might as well use her all the time. And yeah, this will just make her a lot more consistent at landing her debuffs. And she's not like a main damage dealer, so she won't do as much damage as these three. But she's a very good, you know, secondary damage dealer that has a lot of support capabilities. Her passive and her S3 are just so, so powerful. Next up, we have Zeo. So Zeo is the king of first turn. If you like to cleave, actually, out of all these options, Zeo is the must-have. I think pretty much out of every ML5 star, if you don't have Zeo and you like to cleave, you need Zeo. And this is because of his passive Supreme Authority. At the start of the battle, you get 20% CR. So I have him at 20 or 256 uh, speed right now. At the start of battle, he gains uh, 25.6 times 2. So that's going to be 51.2. So he'll be at around 308-ish speed. So my Zeo is a little bit slower. You want to get him to like 260-ish. So you can guarantee that he's at like 312, 313 speed. Even higher actually because you see a lot of rands nowadays even pushing 320 speed in the high ends of PvP. So and regardless, it makes it so that you can actually outspeed units who are way, way higher than you in speed, which is why he's the king of cleave and the king of anti-cleave, right? If you can guarantee the first turn against cleave, you typically win. If you guarantee the, well, you have to guarantee the first turn in cleave to actually have a chance to win, right? So it makes it so that he's a very good cleave unit. He can also um, disable unit with his S3, you know, strip two buffs, silence, uh, CR pushback, Penetrates defense by 100%, which is insane. Gives him Deify, which makes him very tanky. And gives him crit chance by 50%, so you only need him at 50% crit chance here. And his S1, single target attack, gives him attack buff. This hits like a truck. The first um, part of it is a regular attack that gives him attack buff. It hits pretty hard. The secondary attack, Disappear, which happens after. This hits insanely hard. Penetrates defense by 50%, which is crazy. You can one-shot a ton of units with this. Um, there's two builds to him as well. You can build him on a damage oriented build uh, both builds will actually have him on speed and penetration but you can put him on a damage build which is just full crit damage and attack with maybe some bulk or you can put him on a full effect in this opener build and you know put him on like something like i don't know like bloody rose which is very common on him to give him more effect in this here and to actually put a vampiric touch so he can sustain which is actually pretty nice um if you do that you want to aim for like 200 percent effect in this and you want to lower his attack and crit damage here compared to mine and just keep his speed very high. Uh, both builds are viable. It's really up to you how you want to play him. I've had more success with the full damage build. It makes him more consistent, I'd say, because you can actually use him as a solo DPS in a lot of situations like this. He actually is innately tanky. And if I put him on Etika's and I could reset his S3 uh, with his um, you know, turn cycling and possibly even you know cycle even faster with killing a unit with his S1 and catch people off guard, you can actually keep your DFI up pretty much permanently, which is insane. So a lot of builds. I think Zeo is the best if you like to cleave, if you like to go fast, if you're seeing yourself struggling against very fast openers like uh, Conquer Lilius, you definitely want him. Keep in mind he gets countered by Guiding Light users because this stealth stops it, um, or stops Zeo from actually using his S3 on them and actually disabling them. So he will struggle against Lua, Nagul, and Bridal Chisaria. So if you're struggling against those openers, he won't really help you. But against other openers like Ran, Peyra, Conquer Lilius, he will definitely carry you and he's a very powerful unit, I think. Like I mentioned, all four of these units are very good picks. Uh, just to summarize, very line our Sermia, very consistent damage dealer, good against counter attack units, dual attack units, extra attack units, Navy Captain Landy, um, Sanya, even Conquerlius, Ocean Breeze Luka, Lone Crescent Bologna. Kind of similar, honestly. She does very good against AoE attackers because she builds up her fighting spirit to counter attack with her S2. Good against Navy Captain Landy because she guarantee crits with her abilities and Senya, and she's just a very solid unit overall. Um, just keep in mind, she is a dark unit with these dark three dark units. They are weak to save your Aiden, all three of them. Uh, besides Briar Witch Asari, obviously, because Briar Witch Asari can actually just one shot her off the opener. Well, not one shot her, but set up a one shot her with the with the damage she does. Um, but anyways, yeah, Lone Crescent Bologna is very good against those units. Briar Witch Asari very against good against Savior Aiden, uh, Dustina, Main Chloe, um, anything that evades, and then Zeo, just a very powerful opener. Not really a specific unit he's good against, but. He does counter those non-guiding light user uh, openers like Ran and stuff like that, Conquer Lilius, and he is a solid damage dealer. Uh, you can actually pick him as just a you know slot in damage dealer, and he does pretty well in PvP. But yeah, that is my opinion on four of these units. You can't go wrong with any of them. 
Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys actually chose, if you already chose in the past from the Moonlight Recruitment, or what you plan to choose after watching this.